the New Testament reading is taken from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 to 5 and verses 13 to 17. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble, either by spirit or by word or by letter or as it is from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the Son of God of perdition, who oppresses and exalts himself above all that is called God, all that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and believe in the truth, to which He called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work and work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning we are going to meditate upon the epistle that was read to us today. It's very interesting and please pay attention that our eyes can be opened and know which period we are in. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that we can come before your presence in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you Lord for this day that as we meditate upon 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, through your Holy Spirit, inspire us that we may know the truth and the truth truly set us free. Please we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Paul was writing from Rome to the church in Thessalonica. Because in Thessalonica, there was a false preaching going around that the last days has come and Christ has come back. So Paul has, when he heard about it, he has to put in perspective what he has taught them earlier in uh, first letter to the Thessalonians. It's all about second coming and therefore he was going to clear away their doubts and also for us to know the times and this is very clearly he uh, puts on a chronological order how it's going to be and therefore we are going to see that he writes first five important things he talks about the last days the restrainer the man of sin the temple and judgment so five things he talks about and he puts them in order and says this is how it is going to be and therefore let no one deceive you by any means. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, the greatest thing that will happen in the last day is the deception. A lot of people will come and say they are the Messiah. And in fact now in Israel this one man has been declared as the Messiah. Solomon ben Judah. They say he is a Messiah. So 
He said there will be a Messiah in the church, there will be a Messiah in the wilderness, don't go after them. And therefore he says, what will be the sign of the last days? So he is giving us indications. The last days will be when there are certain things take place. And to make things easier, God has taken one group of people and said, their future and their state of being will tell you when you are in the last days. If you read Ezekiel chapter 35, 36, 37, in fact 38 also, it will tell you that Israel will settle as a prosperous country in the land that was promised through Moses to the Israelites. Alright, now the very important word there is, is from all corners of the earth, all the nations of the earth. He said, I will tell the east, let my children go. From the west, I will tell them, <coughs> bring back my children. To the north, I will say, release the captive children. To the south, I will tell them. So, if you look at a country that has people coming from all over the world and staying as one nation because they believe in Torah and that is present day Israel. That's one sign you say. You might say, well, Israel was captive, uh, sorry, bondage, in bondage in uh, Egypt, but they came from one country. Then the Babylonian captivity, when they returned, mainly they came from Babylon and present day Iran, Persia. They did not come from. Then the Romans dispersed them throughout the earth. Then you will ask me, what about the northern kingdom of Israel? He was captured by the Israel, Assyrians, and there is nothing about them. But if you read Ezekiel, you will find out these two, Isaiah, these two nations, I will make it as one. And therefore, the present uh, Jewish nation is the one that is prophesied. That's number one, last day's beginning. Then number two, Jerusalem should be the contention of the nations. <coughs> that is in Zechariah chapter 14. He says, I will make Jer Jerusalem a contentious issue and people will be drunk over it. That means they cannot decide what to do. And anybody who is trying to take away the nation from Israel, the capital Jerusalem, then that people will be punished. And that person who is propagating that will be punished. So we are seeing that right now in front of us. So that means we are in the last days now. Actually the last days started. It's not one single day or a small short period of time. Bible says, according to Peter, he said the last days began when Jesus Christ was born as a human being and died for us. He said God spoke to us in earlier through the prophets. In the last days, he sent his only son. So we are in the last part of the last days that started 2000 years ago. So every generation, it is your last day. Those of us who are about 70, we know we got a few more years to live and this is our last days. You, you remember, that your younger ones, you got many more years, but you are still in the last days uh, frame uh, time, you know. That is the thing. So we are in the last days. We are seeing it. And in the last days, you will hear of wars and rumors of war. We are actually seeing a big war taking place uh, between Russia and Ukraine. And we also, we are not remembering, you know, what's actually happening in other parts of the world. In uh, the Americans have gone into Haiti and there's a problem starting there and rumors of war. China wants to take back Taiwan. North Korea wants to unify uh, <coughs> the whole Korean Peninsula by removing the South Korean regime. So there is war. And India announced two days ago they are ready to take back the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Everybody wants to rearrange the borders so also, you'll soon hear from Africa the borders to be rearranged. So we are having wars and rumors of war and then pestilence. These are the signs which our Lord gave us and we must pay heed to it. So we are in the last days, that's number one.
Number two, Paul talked about the lawless man, the son of perdition, the man of sin will not be revealed till the restrainer is removed. And the common talk and the common concept of the people is it must be the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is being God. He is everywhere. He cannot be removed from any place. Please. Yeah, that is our Trinitarian belief. God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. God cannot be removed from any place. He is <coughs> omnipresence is everywhere. So it is not the Holy Spirit. Who is the restrainer? So I look back and say, is there are any examples in the church, in the book, in the holy book, in the Bible, about a restrainer being removed before the destruction comes? Then I found that Noah was a righteous man. And unless he was removed, unless he was removed from the earth, so he was put in an ark, a big ship, and he and his family were removed. And seven days later only the rain came. You understand? So remember this, the, the restrainer in the, before the flood, it was Noah and his family. Now, second thing, because the Bible says you must have two witnesses before you take anything as truth. The second witness in the Bible is in the Old Testament. It's the story of destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. But Lot was there. And Peter says Lot was a righteous person. He was praying for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the angel said, well, without we removing you from here, we cannot destroy. So he was removed from Sodom and Gomorrah before the cities were destroyed. Similarly, similarly, <coughs> before the man of sin is revealed, the restrainer must be removed. So who do you think the restrainer? It's you and me. So the rapture must take place and the people, the church must be removed. How do I know this? From Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, I think it says that. It says the man child was taken up, caught up and taken to heaven. And then the, yeah, the, the dragon started his ministry. But the problem is, there is a contradiction, looks like a contradiction. The church will go through the persecution and suffering, but at the same time, but we forget to remember that the church has three groups of people. One is the child. Children, I write to you because you just know Jesus Christ. Young men, I write to you because you have overcome the evil one. Fathers, I write to you because you know the counsel of God. It is the restraining is the father group, you know. They are the ones who are really praying, who are shedding tears, looking at the situation in this world today. It's horrible. You know, God blessed a nation and they fall away. U.S. was a nation that was blessed of all the Americas. And they became the rich, powerful and all that. But today, they have forsaken Jesus Christ. I think I was watching a program in uh, MSNBC. And they were asking, the man just said, you know, uh, it's all because of Jesus. Then the lady immediately stopped it and said, there's a technical glitch, we'll come back to it. They never came back. They just don't want the name of Jesus to be proclaimed. That bad America is. And America is going to lose. And I know how it is because when Israel being invaded by the Goma, Togma, Togma, Iran, Libya, Ethiopia, and all these countries were to come against Israel, the merchants of Tarshish, they are the fellows, they won't be able to do anything. That means the West will lose its power. The Bible is very clear. The death knell for the hegemony of the Western powers has been wrung. It is not by China, it's not by India, it's not by Russia. It is by our Lord God because they forsook God. A lot of things we can talk about it, but I have no time. I just want to tell you. So the restrainer is that group called Father, you know the council. They are the only one who will know the time. They are the only one who will hear the shout. They are the only one who will hear the 
<coughs> trumpet blowing, they are the only one who will hear the call, come up and they'll fly. And the rest of the church, the young man and the child will remain. And they will go through the tribulation. And half of them will <coughs> uh, deny Christ and half will die as martyrs. If you see Revelation chapter 5, under the throne of God, there were souls who were beheaded and they said, when is our revenge? So he said, wait till the number is completed, then you will have your revenge. So restrainer is the church, especially the group that belongs to the Father. That is very important, <coughs> Jeremiah. Give me one And the man of sin is to be relieved, revealed, I'm sorry. The man of sin, number two, number three. <clears throat> the man of sin is the one who will sell his soul to the devil. Because his ambition is so great, he wants to be worshipped as God. So what he does, he sells his soul to the devil. It is not a new story. That was an old story. First, as I think, he sold his soul and he got a power. He wanted to see Helen of Troy. And then he would say, is this the face that launched thousand ships and all that? So you can sell your soul to the devil to enjoy the benefits in this earth. So that is the man of perdition. And that's the man of sin. He will come preaching two things peace and prosperity and because of the war in Ukraine and there will be no peace and there will be no prosperity. If you are buying unit, unit trust, amana, sahama, anything, you know your value has shrunk and many people are, those who are playing with shares have lost a lot of money and though it's a paper loss now, sooner or later it will bite them. So even if your money in the bank is not going to buy many things because your ringgit will become smaller and the price of the bread will be higher. That's what the Bible says. So what you earn will be just enough to cover one meal a day. So get ready to learn how to fast and take one food a day. So when it comes, you, you, for you it's normal. Instead of having morning one roti chanai, afternoon one big briyani, and night one big, ten course dinner, forget about it. Learn how to fast so that your stomach will know how to adjust to the need. It's going to come. So when the man of sin is come from northwest of present day Israel, he will be at first a man of peace, a man of prosperity, and he will do mighty things. Revelation 13 says, he can even bring fire from heaven to kill those who oppose him. So everybody will power. And people not only will worship him, the Bible says, they will worship the devil who gives him the authority and power. So he is indirectly or indirectly devil on the earth, Lucifer on the earth. You see, Lucifer doesn't have a body. You and I, God gave us a body. Jesus Christ in Hebrew, if you read, he says, Lord, I'm coming to fulfill your word. You have a prepared a body for me. There's no body prepared for Lucifer. So he has to <coughs> uh, endure a body. So when he's pushed from the second heavens into the physical earth, he needs a physical body to manifest. And the Antichrist, the man of sin, the lawless one, will give him the body. Now, why is he called the lawless one? He will change the laws which God has given. God, Bible says very clearly, God created them, man and woman. Today in America, there is a walk going on. There is no sex. Transgender. You cannot call a person he or a lady she. You have to call them in a <coughs> non-gender name. 
and they are teaching to their children. That's changing the law. Then you will change the time. Soon or later, we will have a different way of looking at time. We just watch it's going to come. God is giving us the warning and is letting us know what is going to happen. You better be prepared. And he said, you grow from childhood to adult, from adulthood to fatherhood. That's what God is telling us. So the lawless man will be revealed as soon as the rapture takes place. He may be on the earth. We do not know when. But we will know when the rapture. And especially this is good news for the church in case you miss the rapture. But you know somebody will be missing from the church. Then you know rapture has taken place. Then you have a choice. Either to take the mark or either to willing to be beheaded and die. So that is the situation we are going to be in. Then the temple. The Solomon built the first temple. 200 years later or 300 years later was destroyed by uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Then, under the orders of Cyrus, Ezra, then later, 100 years later, Nehemiah returned and built a smaller temple. And <clears throat> 300 years later, after the second temple was built, it was renewed and remodeled and made the grandier building of the world by Herod the Great. That plaza he built is still there. And but after Babylon, uh, after the Romans destroyed the Jerusalem and the temple place, there was nothing there. They actually put a, a Roman temple, but destroyed. But by the year 300, Byzantine Christianity took over the place. And they built a hexagonal church in the uh, play, uh, temple mount, where the dome of the rock, you know, the golden one, it stood. And if you look at the building, it's hexagonal, you know. uh, sorry, uh, octagonal. Because the Byzantine theology, Jesus Christ is the new beginning. There are seven, one, two, three, seven days. And Jesus is the new beginning, so it should be octagonal, eight. Octagonal also two crosses. One this side, one this side, two crosses. Here and here and here. So what had happened, you will have eight parts in each section of the cross. So it is to tell, it's a new beginning, a new era, and that's how they built. When the Muslims took over, they cut off the top and put a dawn, that's all. But you can steal that. And inside they wrote the blasphemy. The blasphemy is that God has no son. But the son of God came to their temple. So you have to watch out for the third temple to be built. The lawless one to attract the Christians and to deceive the Jews and the Christians. What you will do, he will put up the third temple. So Bible talks about a temple. Of course, many people say this Paul wrote it in 65 AD and uh, the Titus came and conquered Jerusalem in 70 AD and he put up the uh, <coughs> sign of the Roman, uh, what he called the scepter, uh, scepter, and said that this is your power. This is uh, what of desolation. No, it is not. It is not. And the things didn't happen. You did not have it. Uh, have the last days, you didn't have the restrainer removed, you didn't have the man of perdition revealed, and that was not the temple. The temple is going to be built. If you see the temple being built, you know that Lord is at the gate, at the door. He is ready. So we are looking at it, and they have a heifer, five uh, female cows, red totally has brought in their one year old, they had to wait for two more years and examine whether got more than two strands of any other color. If they don't have, then they know it is an indication they have this heifer to be killed 
burnt and take the ashes to purify the temple. They are prefabricated everything and keeping ready. So we are at the cusp of these events taking place. And then finally he talks about judgment. Verses 13 to end, he talked about the judgment. The judgment is two types. One is for the Christians who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and one for those who don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You, you get my point? And before the end, before he ends up the whole earth and he returns physically, there will be a great revival, a final uh, warning to everybody and the gospel will be preached everywhere. And those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Those who don't will be saved. And you and me, being faithful followers of Christ, we will be judged not for punishment, but for reward. But for reward. The day of Christ will be judged. It's in 1 Corinthians, as well as 2 Corinthians. And if your works are built by wood, grass and chaff, the fire will burn it, but your souls will be saved because as a tree that is saved from a burning fire, that you will be rewarded for your faith. But if you build with your good works, as Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, we are created anew in Christ Jesus to do good works. And if you build on the foundation of Christ and apostles with diamonds, with precious stones, and with silver and gold, then it will be tested by fire and whatever remains, you will be rewarded higher. That is the judgment. The other judgment is in the white throne judgment that's happening at the same time as Jesus is uh, ruling on the earth and it is called, the books will be opened. Those names that not written in the book of life will be cast away into the hellfire straight away because <clears throat> But other books will be opened and they will be judged according to the works. There are four books if I told you last time in my Bible study. If you go back and remember the book of remembrance, the book of life, the book of the Lord and the book of works. There will be four books. You'll be, you must come under the category of the book of life. Because when the 70 disciples return to Jesus and very joyful attitude and say, Oh Lord, we thank you because you sent us out in power and the devils and the evil spirits obey us. He says, hey, don't be happy about because the evil spirits and the devils obey you and you can cast them out. Be happy because your name is written in the book of life. So your joy must be when your name is written in the book of life. And it is says, those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ their names are written in the book of life, regardless which church you belong to. As long as you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, your name is written in the book of life, you will be saved. So that is the five things Paul writes to encourage us. He wrote that to Thessalonica 2000 years ago. Now this morning we read it and we are encouraged by it because the word is true. Everything he wrote is taking place in front of our eyes. 100 years ago, it didn't take place. 80 years ago, it didn't take place. It only started after May 14, 1948. And Jerusalem came into the hands of the Jewish people on the 7th of June, 1967. Now, as the word says, the temple. And there's one more thing I want to because the last days, the Jewish people will return and according to Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 8 and 9, then the, my people returning from all parts of the corners of the earth, I will give them the pure language and they will speak in it. And when Zephaniah said that, it was Hebrew language. But when the re people returned from the Babylonian uh, captivity, they spoke Aramaic. In fact, our Lord himself didn't speak in Hebrew. He spoke in Aramaic. 
But Paul writes in Acts chapter 26, verse 14, he says, when I was traveling to Damascus, the risen Lord talked to me. He talked to me in Hebrew language. Do you know that? The people spoke Aramai at that time. But the risen Lord was telling to Paul, he was talking in Hebrew. And this is the language that will be written. And today we have the nation of Israel speaking the Hebrew language which Moses spoke, which Abraham spoke, which David spoke, which Solomon spoke, and of course our risen Lord speaks. So all these are showing us we are at the, at the last lap. So be prepared. If the Lord comes 2,000 years later, it doesn't matter. Still your soul is saved. So thank God that you are able to understand these things and prepare your heart and know that Lord is good. He wants you to think. And so finally what I must do? Now I must watch and pray. In Second Chronicles we read, the sons of Issachar knew the times because they read the Torah, they had the Old Testament, Torah only, and they were praying and they were watching at the events and they knew the times of uh, that their age. You understand? The sons of Issachar. You go and see the second chronicles. So watch and pray. Be steadfast in faith. There will be a lot of new theologies will be coming. A lot of new ideas will be coming inside the church to take you away from the church. Because there will be a replacement theology which tells you, forget about Israel. Jesus has abandoned them. You are the new Israel. We are not the new Israel. We are the <coughs> redeemed Gentiles. Accept that fact. God's promise to Abraham and God's promise to Israel still stands. He was not going to just change it. No, it is not. So don't be taken up by replacement theology, which sadly, our Anglican communion subscribes to. And therefore, they will not allow the embassies of Britain to move, the uh, United Kingdom to move to Jerusalem. They don't want. So also Australia moved it, the new Prime Minister came in, now they have gone back to Tel Aviv. So things are happening. So you have to watch and pray and remain straightforward in your faith. Third thing, live an expectant life. That the next moment will be God's arrival. Therefore I must be holy. Because the Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy. So we have to live a life that is pleasing to God. So three things we do. We watch and pray. Steadfast in our faith. The Nicene Creed is the basis. And then live expectantly. That means live a holy life. Put away all other things. Get ready to fly. Shall we pray? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that we could come before your throne of grace and mercy, pleading for our souls, Lord, that we will be saved because you promised those who call on your name will be saved. We are calling on the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the matchless name, the name that is above all names. We thank you, we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.